I'm here today to talk about how you can generate insights in satellite imagery in near real time. Uh, this is a joint work with uh, Ohm, Ishani, Indranio, and uh, Deepak. So um, if you look at the number of satellite launch per year, you can see an exponential growth uh, recently. And uh, the reason is that some of these newly launched satellites are uh, some of these like small CubeSats that can fit in your hand. And uh, they are smaller and they're easier and cheaper to launch. And uh, companies are launching them in huge constellations. So actually these satellites can contain all sorts of hardwares on board, including uh, photography hardware or computation hardware. And this gives them a lot of interesting applications and one of these applications is to take high definition image of the Earth. So uh, for example, what we see here is a uh, uh, image that's taken uh, of the uh, Santa Clara County by the uh, planet SkySat. Uh, and uh, in this red circle here is Hyatt Regency Santa Clara, the very place we're sitting as NSDI is happening. So um, from time to time, in these satellite imageries, there will be interesting events going on. For example, in the left side here, we see a uh, forest fire. And on the right side here, we see a bomb attack. Now, of course, when such interesting events happen, it will be good if the interested users, such as the California Fire Department, can just request to these uh, satellite companies to deliver to them, the, um, for example, the, the images that contain uh, California forest fire. However, the major problem here is that the majority of these satellite imageries nowadays have to wait for several hours to several days before they can be made available for our users. And of course, such long latency is unacceptable for something as urgent as a forest fire. And we definitely need something that's faster and more efficient. And actually, uh, forest fire is not the only application that requires a real-time Earth monitoring. You can use this functionality to do a lot of the other things. For example, you can use it to monitor a flood. You can use it to monitor a, uh, like a military operation. And uh, you can use it to monitor like um, maritime traffic. All of these uh, <coughs> applications require a near real-time information delivery. But the status quo is this information has to wait for hours and days to come. So in today's talk, I'm going to introduce why current uh, approach cannot satisfy the latency requirements. And I'm going to present our new system Servo that tries to solve these challenges by um, improving the way that we handle images on the satellite. And finally, a real world evaluation of the Servo system. So let's begin with the status quo of the current approach. So the first approach is uh, how, the, how the LEO satellite systems work nowadays. So uh, we have satellites orbiting in the space, taking images of the Earth, like this one showing here. And um, on the ground, we have a terrestrial network that consists of a uh, cloud and a list of ground stations that support the satellite constellation. And the satellite will establish connection with the ground station and will eventually downlink the image that it takes to the ground station to, for processing there. However, the problem here is that unlike most IoT system, the satellite does not stand still. It actually travels very fast across our skies while the Earth is spinning like it's shown in this uh, animation here. And uh, if you uh, project the location of the satellite uh, on the Earth, you get some complicated pattern like this. Now the problem here is that for any ground station, it cannot cover the entire sky because Earth is a ball. It can only cover a small region of the sky right next to it. And um, even if the uh, companies like Planet has established a global uh, ground station network, it's still very hard to, to cover the entire sky. And as a result, we can see here that the satellite is getting in and out of contact with the ground from time to time. And uh, what this means is that in the real world, when the satellite is not in contact with the ground station, it will accumulate all the images that it took in its storage. And when it gets into contact with the ground station, it has a chance of downlinking the images to the ground. However, sometimes the uh, connection quality is not good enough from time to time, or the link capacity is not sufficient to downlink everything. 
And um, as a result, some of the images on the satellite might not be downlinked. It has to fly away with the satellite to wait till the next downlink uh, opportunity. And these images might include very critical ones, including the forest fire, which we're seeing here. And what this means is that the traditional approach will cause a large latency delay, potentially for some very critical images that needs to be downlinked right now. So to solve this, there has been this new line of research where uh, they use the uh, computation capacity of the satellite to uh, filter and discard the non-essential non images on the satellite. And uh, for example, we have the Orbital Edge Computing paper from ASPLOS 2020 and the Kodan paper from ASPLOS 2023. <coughs> so uh, what they do is, uh, let's say we take a step back here and uh, we use the satellite to process the images and we discard all the images but the required ones by the users, like the forest fire here, and we only downlink the user-required information to the ground. So this could potentially solve the network congestion problem and the limited link capacity, right? But the problem is, you don't really know beforehand what image is going to be important in the future. Let's take this event, for example. Um, we know that in 2023, uh, a Chinese balloon entered the US airspace, and actually the planet company were able to uh, backtrack the trace of the uh, balloon by looking back in history into those images containing the balloon in its cache. Now imagine that you have discarded these images because they were not requested by any users at the time they were taken, then such accomplishment can never be made. So what we get from here is that the, uh, the filtering and discarding scheme cannot handle the newly emerging application that require historical data very well. The second challenge that we're facing uh, lies in the scale of the satellite imagery versus the compute power. So we know that the compute on the satellite is limited by both size and weight because you have to fit the hardware into a small satellite on your hand. And it's limited by the power it consumes because it has to rely on the solar cell uh, for power uh, harvesting. And as a result, it's uh, very hard to uh, support a multiple GPU server on board, the ones that we normally use to run computer vision models on the images. And however, on the other hand, for the photography, the satellite takes one image every two seconds, and each image is high resolution and contains tens of millions of pixels. And as a result, a satellite in the planet Dove constellation, for example, can generate up to two terabytes per day. And uh, we can see that the satellite is generating way too many images for itself to process. And uh, it's very hard for this uh, filter and discard scheme to work when you have to run all the queries that the user submits across all the images on the satellite. So to summarize, we can see that the traditional approach suffers from a long network latency, while the uh, filter and discard scheme suffers from not being able to handle emerging queries and not being able to scale. So is it possible that we can get the best of both worlds? To do this, we build a new system called Servo, which tries to solve the challenge by uh, changing the way we handle compute and images <coughs> on the satellite. So the first idea of the servo is to prioritize the image delivery. And, by, uh, and here's what I mean. So let's say uh, we have a list of images on board the satellite. And uh, what servo does is it uses the computation on board to process the images and to reorder them so that we can deliver the user requested information in high, uh, in high priority without discarding any images so that they might be uh, useful in the future. And uh, the second idea of Servo is to utilize the predictability of the satellite, because we know that the satellite actually runs in fixed orbits, and uh, where it's going to be in the future can be computed using basic physics. And what this means is that we know where a satellite is going to be, and we also know from which regions the satellite is going to take its images from. And uh, we already have the old images from yesterday or last week over the same region, on the ground, and our idea is to uh, exploit this information to offload computation to the ground. So let's first look at how a user query is modeled in the servo system. <clears throat> let's say that you ask your computer to uh, find all the forest fires in California. What your computer will essentially do 
is to model your request as an intersection of four different con uh, conditions. Uh, that the image is in California, that the image has forest fire, and uh, the, image not be, uh, the image having forest, and the image is not being cloudy, because if it's cloudy, then you don't see anything. And finally, the image has to have fire. So what we see here is that for the sample user query of California forest fire, we essentially model it as a chain of four different filters, the California forest, cloud, and fire. And uh, we can bifurcate this, these four uh, filters into two categories here. On the left side, we have what we call a glacial filter because their um, features does not change rapidly over time. For example, a place that belongs to California last week is probably still California this week. And uh, on the other hand, on the right side, we have what we call a dynamic filter because their features do change rapidly over time. Like for example, we know that cloud can appear and disappear within hours. And uh, we, we realize that such bifurcation does not only apply to forest fire. Let's take another example. We know that some trading companies are interested in analyzing satellite imagery that has uh, oil vessel near hubs to predict oil price and do trading. And again, for this user query, you can essentially model it as a chain of port, cloud, and vessel. And you can again bifurcate this. Thank you. And, um, what this means is that we can bifurcate the entire uh, compute load into the glacial and dynamic part, and uh, we can distribute the compute across the ground and the satellite by using the old images on the ground to compute the glacial filters and only use the new images on the satellite to compute the, um, <coughs> the dynamic filters. And uh, in, our, in our evaluation, we, uh, we realized that by doing this, we can save up to 99% of the compute load that we have. And we realized the idea of utilizing predictability can be further expanded because not only is the uh, satellite trajectory predictable, uh, there are other predictable things such as uh, the weather. And uh, on the other hand, we see that the cloud filter is a very common filter across a lot of applications because you need to make sure that the image is not uh, full of cloud or you see nothing. And again, if, the, uh, if our weather gives a high fidelity of the cloudiness of a certain region, then we can just bypass the uh, cloud filter on the satellite and use the weather information as the final result, saving the limited compute resource. So with all these ideas um, in mind, our system, our system servo is designed as follows. Uh, we have cloud, ground station, and, and satellite. And the ground station is in charge of gathering external information and pre-computing satellites and the uh, glacial filters. And it will send the information to the satellite. The satellite will run the rest of the dynamic filters and generate the user requests and information and uh, send it back to the ground station when it's in contact. The ground station will assemble all the information and deliver it for the to the cloud for the delivery. <coughs> So uh, as for evaluation, we evaluated Servo using a real-world data set that's collected by the planet Dolf constellation, which has over 200 satellites. And uh, these, this constellation took over 10 million images over the 20 days that we, uh, we, our experiment was on. And uh, we downloaded the image content of over 40,000 images uh, over California, that's over 13 terabytes in size to run, our, um, to run our deep learning models through them. And as for ground station, we use two different configurations. The first one is the actual ground station system that Planet uses, and the second one is uh, a global distributed ground st station system that was uh, presented in one of our previous work in SICOM 2020 called L2D2. And we selected uh, California fire, de uh, fire detection and uh, port vessel counting as uh, sample applications. And uh, we did a trace-driven simulation using the real, uh, using the real compute time, uh, real energy, and real data as uh, what's happening in the real world. So the first thing we look at is the end-to-end -end latency performance. And uh, we can see here that uh, in the baseline case where everything is delivered in order, uh, the, the median latency of all the images is up to 77 hours. Now when you apply servo to this system, you can reduce the median latency of those important images requested by the user down to just about one hour. And further, when we apply both servo and L2D2, 
We can further reduce the latency from one hour down to just about two minutes uh, and ensure the near real-time information delivery. The next thing we look at is how Servo is able to scale up because we envision that there will be much more applic applications being submitted in the future. And uh, to do this, we scale up the compute load by two times, 10 times, and 20 times. Uh, and we can see that Servo still achieves great improvement in latency even for up to 20 times of the compute load. And uh, finally, I would like to point out some uh, challenges that's still waiting for people to address. So for example, we can see that with a lot of applications being submitted to Servo, we, there are a lot of redundancies. For example, the cloud is shared by a lot of uh, applications. And uh, is it possible that we can like, share the information and compress the compute graph so that we can like, reduce the compute load? And the next thing is the satellites are now able to take uh, this hyperspectral imagery, which is much bigger and much heavier to compute on. And what can be done so that we can still ensure the uh, real-time information delivery given all the constraints. And, uh, and finally, our code is uh, available by scanning this QR code here. And with that, I'm happy to take questions.